All right, breaking news. Uh, as I'm out for my evening creative walk, SBF, Sam Eggman Freed, 25 years in the slammer. That is the sentence down from uh, the court in the United States. And uh, the team came to me, they said, did you see this just happened? And they said, what does the nomad capitalist think about this? And I had to think about it for a minute. Here's what the nomad capitalist thinks about SBF and the sentence. Now, I did not follow this trial. Uh, we help a lot of crypto clients. I have some crypto holdings, but I'm not all in on crypto. And obviously, I think, you know, it's an industry where you want to flush out the bad actors, much like our industry, the offshore industry. And I am the goody two-shoes of the offshore world. Somebody said, this guy's a goody two-shoes. I said, guilty as charged. This is many years ago. And what I take from SPF, here's a guy who was living in the Bahamas, whose company was based in the Bahamas, and somehow he was still brought to justice in the United States. And you see that so many times. You see the former president of Honduras, the guy got out of office and like days later they charged him and recently he was convicted. And he's gonna go to the slammer as well. They're gonna lock him up. And they were not, you know, beyond the law. And so one thing I'll sometimes see people talking about, oh, have a place where you, you can't be extradited. Non-extradition countries. We've got an article on this at nomadcompolis.com. And what it says is don't rely on them. Um, my advice to anyone is you want to be a goody two shoes and that's the best way to stay out of the arm uh, of the law. You just going to some other country is not going to save you. And even if the country uh, that you're going to doesn't have an extradition treaty, I think people have said the UAE doesn't have an extradition treaty. I think that might be correct. The UAE hands people over to the US. Um, on, a, on an ongoing basis. So just because you don't have an extradition treaty doesn't mean they can't just say, hey, the guy's done at the police precinct, come grab him and we're not going to say anything. Hush, hush. Uh, and as you're seeing with Julian Assange, just because uh, there is an extradition treaty doesn't mean you get handed right over. I mean, he's been in jail, Julian Assange, for five years and it looks like it could be longer. They're actually talking about uh, maybe they'll just plea bargain it out because he's made not get much more than that. Just give up on the case. Uh, but SBF is a great reminder of the fact that um, you want to be doing the right stuff in your business. You want to be doing the right stuff in your life. I see people who think that just, you know, hey, why would you tell the government? Why would you tell the tax man about your crypto? I'm not in favor of rules that create laborious disclosure requirements or lots of new bureaucracy or lots of new regulations or infiltration of people's privacy. I'm certainly not a fan of big new taxes. Uh, but listen, this isn't the 70s where there's, you know, 10 countries on earth that you might want to live in. There's dozens and dozens and dozens of places you can go. There's competition in a way there wasn't before. You could almost say that the world today with the places you can live, I spend time in Malaysia. Got one of my guys going to Malaysia to work on the house uh, next week. I spend time in Malaysia. Would you have gone to Malaysia 30 years ago? No. So it's almost like, if you look at since the fall of the Soviet Union, for example, you've had dozens of new countries, both from the Soviet Union and many other places, that are suddenly livable, that weren't livable then. And so to me, that degrades the argument for, well, I'm just gonna own crypto and how are they gonna find me? Well, they're gonna find you because they have billions of dollars and they're spending billions of dollars to try and find people who aren't paying their taxes. Whether you agree with the taxes or not, and I'm an advocate for low taxes, zero if you want, if there's a place that offers that, why not? We help people do both. Uh, but uh, don't be screwing around. Don't be thinking they won't find you. Same thing with offshore bank accounts. If you're an American especially, file your forms, do what has to be done. If you don't like it, go where you're treated best, find somewhere else. And don't think, I've seen this years ago, eh, if you don't make that much money, uh, you know, just go to whatever and they're not gonna bother with you. And Listen, some people get a false sense of security because sometimes it takes five years for the authorities to, you know, catch up with you. The tax man it takes them five years to catch up with you. But, you know, especially if you're from the US, 
or some other big country, uh, <laughs> they have resources. They're going to come and get you. And Sam Bagman Fried is another example of that. You know, I've seen people who are in Dubai, you know, guys doing scams on social media. U.S. wants them. Here they are. So for me, rather than taking the arrogant approach, and I, I think I've been successful in life because I'm always thinking, you know, where am I not smart enough? Rarely am I thinking I'm the best. I'm the smartest. Nobody knows more than I do. And I think that served me well. I've stayed out of trouble. And I want you to stay out of trouble. So take it from SBF. Now the Bahamas obviously is pretty close away. It's pretty close to the US. But the UAE is not that close. They send people back all over the world. Um, so if you don't agree with the laws where you live, now obviously I think it's probably illegal what SBF did pretty much everywhere on earth. <laughs> like, yeah, if you're going to scam people, there's, yeah, there's nowhere you can go. But if you just, you know, don't agree with the rate of tax, if you, uh, just, uh, don't agree with the regulations or the policies or whatever the case may be where you live, go where you're treated best, get a residence permit and move there or get citizenship and move there if they offer citizenship by investment or if you qualify for citizenship by descent. Uh, and in some cases, get citizenship. Let's say you want to live in, you know, somewhere in Europe. If you can get one European pa Union country passport, you can live in the other European Union countries. So people will ask us, you know, why should I get my Polish citizenship by descent? I don't live in Poland. Well, do you want to live in English speaking Ireland or Malta or Cyprus? Do you want to live in Romantic France, I don't know why you'd want to do that and pay so much, but you can do that. Like, so there's options. Same with Caribbean citizenship by investment, which by the way, uh, for the five countries talking about raising their price, I've been telling you that for years, all right, you know, same people who like think that they're gonna hide out somewhere and they're just gonna like not be found, but the same ones saying they won't raise the price. They're gonna raise the price, it appears. Four to five Caribbean countries set to double the price in some cases to up to a $200,000 floor, up from a $100,000 floor. So I'm not on the side of big country governments like the US. For people like you and me, who just want to be left alone, who maybe we want to pay some fair rate of tax, but we think, you know, if I made $10 million, am I getting $5 million in value if I pay 50% tax on the whole? When other people pay $5,000 and get the same? Uh, you know, when is my fair share enough? We actually look at it reverse of most people. We actually think, if I'm contributing a couple of million bucks, maybe that's enough. Leave me alone. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> if that's you, no bad capitalist helps people like you, and I'm all for that. That's the way you want to do it. Find a place that matches your values. The more time I spend overseas, uh, the more time I realize um, that I get it's hard to move. I just was in Bogota uh, a couple weeks ago with a guy. He's got five kids, lives in three different places. And I don't, I don't think in all of them he owns homes. He was staying in a hotel. Uh, they do it. So if you're single, if you're married, if you have kids, you can go where you're treated best. There's no excuse. I get it's hard. One of the things that we try and do for our clients is go through a lot of the human element and humanize it and ask a lot of good questions and not just pitch product and not just tell you, yeah, Malta's the answer to everything or Dubai is the answer to everything. We should try and get to know you so you make the right decision so it's easier. It's something I wish I would have had when I was starting out, which is why I created the service that I did. Costs a little bit more up front, but costs a lot less in the long run if you do it right. Um, so I get it's hard to make that first step, but if you don't like the way things are going, my fundamental belief, and you're welcome to disagree, is that you have to decide where you wanna go, where they share your values, whether that's taxes, whether that's personal freedom, whether that's business regulation, whatever the case may be. You have to go to that place. Go to places so you can be the best version of yourself, so you don't have to screw around. That's my perspective, because I don't think I'm smarter than anybody else. I figure, you know what, if I make a mistake, the IRS is going to find me. Um, ultimately, I'm no longer a U.S. taxpayer, so I don't worry about the IRS, at least at the same level. Um, and 
That's what I think you should do. Whether it's giving up your citizenship, whether it's leaving your country, whether it's just moving some money, do it the right way, follow the laws. If you don't like the laws, again, if you're committing fraud, there's no way you're gonna like the laws. Uh, so, you know, don't do that. We screen people and we turn people away who do nasty stuff like that because we don't want it. We want to work with honest people. That's just how I work. There's plenty of guys out there. They'll sell you a fake Mexican passport. You'll get in trouble eventually. Hey, shady people help shady people. That's not what we do. Uh, I don't want good people to get caught into that stuff. Don't get your fake Mexican passport. Oh, yeah, we'll just, we know a guy. <laughs> we know a guy. Okay. Yeah, shady stuff. Don't work with those guys. Um, you know, oh, nobody will know. You don't work with those guys. Um, but if you're just doing things honestly, you're like, you know what? I just want to be left alone. Don't think going somewhere else is going to save you. And if, for me, as a guy who renounced U.S. citizenship, you know, there's been a handful of people over the years who are like, oh, I bet he's trying to, uh, I bet he's trying to avoid something. Believe me. Um, you know, if, if, if a government like the U.S. wants to get you, they're going to get you. Um, so don't think that, you know, moving's going to do that. I've, I've never thought that was the answer to that. I've always thought, how do I live an upstanding life, run an ethical business? Maybe a few people don't like it, but most people do. And going overseas gives me more opportunities, but it should never be for anything untoward. And, uh, that's my thoughts on SBF.